Hey everybody, it's Ben again, and today I'm going to teach you about how to make the most out of the American faction. So this is the fifth faction that came out in Pirates of the Revolution back in 2005. They did have one ship from Crimson Coast, of course, but anyway. So to take advantage of the Americans, they're actually a really good combat faction. So other than the English, um, they might be the best combat faction, not including named crew. So they can really hold their own in a fight really well. And they showed that in Vassal Campaign Game 3, where they were um, embroiled in some wars. And they have a lot of amazing four and five masters, as we'll see here in a moment. And they have some unique and interesting name crew, which we'll see. And they're better at gold running than you think. So getting into it, um, I'll have links to, in the description below for the rankings threads and all the stuff you'll see here, all the different tabs. So I ranked the top 10 American gunships back in 2015. So you can immediately see the Enterprise. And that one is similar to HMS Titan, an amazing gunship with extra action capabilities. Great cannons, good speed, good cargo, 18 points, very fair cost. The Black Watch is a devastating five-masted gunship. USS Kettering, a longship with SL speed, good cannons, and canceling built-in. Ghost Walker, another three-masted gunship with canceling built-in, this one with two L cannons. The Franklin has, um, if you put a captain and helmsman aboard, you'll have SSS speed for 18 points with four 1S cannons, essentially, because of her ability to add plus one to cannons with a captain. The Constitution could easily be number one on the gunship list if it was like a very high point game because the Constitution is just about on par with El Corzado and HMS Endeavor as the best 1v1 gunships in the game. This one has the same ability as uh, El Corzado, along with some good cannons and enough points to really max out some amazing crew setups. The Constitution is fantastic. The other version of the Constitution is also quite good. Plus one against the Pirates, all rank two cannons. Bonham Richard, another great five master. U.S. Thomas Jefferson is a beautiful ship and one of my favorite five masters in the game. Another great one. The Americans are interesting because they got the best of a bunch of three masters, which aren't necessarily their type of ship. So the mercenaries have the most submarines, but the, the Americans got one of the best submarines, USS Mercury. Defensive ability, two L cannons. They got the best longship in the game with the Kettering, even though the Vikings should own the best longship in the game. USS Stevens, another great five master, really is good. And we've got some nice four masters and three masters here as well. So you can check out that thread for ideas on the best American gunships to use to really optimize and get the most out of the Americans. USS Concordia is an interesting ship, kind of like HMS Dreadnought. You can make her like an eternal godship, so to speak, by putting on a bunch of great crew combos to make her essentially in invincible in a way if you're not going up against multiple cancelers. And then we've got the American Gold Runners ranking thread, top 10 Gold Runners. So they're better at Gold Running than you think. And here we go again, a three master, best in class, the Frontier, eight cargo, SS move, hoist, and secret hold. Yeah, it's expensive for a three master, but it's worth it. I've used this thing in small games and in big games, and she gets the job done incredibly well. This is honestly overpowered. She should actually be probably more expensive. I'm thinking 20 to 22 points in that range. This thing can dominate 40 point games. Uh, this thing is just incredible. One of the best, one of the best gold runners in the game. Um, kind of a weird one because a lot of the best gold runners are under 10 points, of course. But the Frontier with that cargo, the hoist keyword is really good. Secret hold helps her out, and the speed is quite good. You know, you'll put a helmsman on, so a triple S for a three-masted gold runner moving um, at that speed with seven or more cargo spaces open. They're just amazing. They have the best native canoes in the game. The Americans. These ones are wicked good. So only 10 points, you got two cargo, the other types of canoes have one in general, SL speed, the other canoes are slower, and you've got a trading ability, which can get crazy, Chain chaining canoes together, uh, I've got battle reports on that, I've done it in a bunch of games, and the American Native Canoes are a powerhouse, it's ridiculous, and they, the Americans have a bunch of good ships, gunships, where you could store the 10 point chieftain, along with a captain and helmsman, so they come to 15 points for those three crew, and from the gunships thread, we can see a bunch of good gunships that are at least 15 points that could carry that chieftain and protect it reasonably well. So no problem there, really, even though the chieftain is, is expensive. The Providence is a fantastic hybrid uh, for any faction, the Americans especially. They didn't get a ton of hybrids or a ton of amazing gold runners, but the cream of the crop for the American gold runners is actually pretty good. Like spots like 1 through 6 or 1 through 7 on this list is, is really quite quite impressive for a faction that most people bash for not being good at gold running at all. So, and they're not as good as 
um, the French, the Pirates, or the Spanish at gold running, and they might, you could make a case they're better or slightly worse than the English, but anyway, USS James Madison is another good one. I like to put the tribal chief in there sometimes. Carolina is a nice ship, kind of si very simple, no ability, but a good ship. Rattlesnake, five cargo for five points due to a negative ability. Can't complain there. Just put a helmsman on. Got seven seven points for LS speed and four cargo. USS Annapolis has exploring built in, kind of like a poor man's version of Le Bon Marine, one of the best gold runners in the game. Nana Nui is solid. Lynx is good. Roanoke is a very good hybrid. Six cargo for 13 points on a five master. Pretty nice package there. And the ability to uh, get pirate crew aboard. So, and then in the honorable mentions, it starts to decline. The Americans don't have a lot of great gold runners, but the ones they do have, um, I, again, like um, maybe spots one through six on this list is it's very impressive, especially those top two or three picks. So, you know, if you use those a bunch, I don't like to use the same stuff all the time, but if you use those a bunch, you got you got a solid shot of winning with the Americans. So, and some, you can really go crazy, especially in like a 60, 80 point game. But the chieftain on the frontier, then you can have the canoes and the frontier. And then with the hoist keyword and the trading ability of the canoes, you can start flinging gold all over the place. It just it's it's actually really great. It's impressive. So for a faction that's known almost exclusive exclusively for combat, they got a solid shot at winning games if you use some of their best stuff. And that's what this video is about, optimizing the Americans. So going through some of their crews, just gonna zip through this fast. One of the problems that Wolf brought up recently um, with a top ten American named crew. Uh, which was a recent thread by God Mason, at least as of this video recording. Um, Wolf talked about how they have a lot of duplicate named crew. So a lot of their best named crew are have multiple versions. So Montana Maze is really good, but all three versions are quite good. But you can only do the new duplicate rule. You can only use one in the fleet at a time. So it's difficult to, to optimize in that way due to the no duplicates rule. And you can see, and it's kind of unfortunate because then they have crew that only have one version, like Beaver, Brown, and Hacksaw, Riley, neither of which is very good or useful, um, but then they didn't get other versions. So it's kind of a weird, kind of a not very optimized named crew selection, but they have some good ones. So Brent Rice, World Hater, that's always an essential crew. I like to use them on the Constitution, for example, or any, any large ship, really. Captain Charles Richard is an interesting one. Montana Mays, getting into him here. He's got a couple versions with the, well, he's got one with ex, extra action, one with same action twice, and then we'll see another one later with Captain and Crew Protect. The Americans got the only released generic Cargo Master, so that's worth mentioning. I don't like Cargo Masters, but they are impressive. All friendly ships in the same nationality as this crew get plus one cargo spaces, takes up no cargo space. So put him on the frontier, he'd be up to nine cargo, um, which is kind of excessive. I would put a helmsman and maybe another crew on as well. But Cargo Masters, this one is great for the Americans because they aren't, they, I mean, even though they're a little bit underrated for gold, they're still definitely not one of the better factions. And you kind of you need some specific pieces to really optimize their gold runner running capabilities within your fleets. So, because they have some quality, but not much quantity in terms of the gold runners, unlike, you know, the Pirates of the French, for example. So the Cargo Master really helps them. Um, it helps ships like the Carolina and the Rattlesnake and the and the Providence become even more effective, and it can make some of their high, some of their like not so great hybrids into better hybrids by adding cargo. So anyway, uh, Carl Smith is pretty bad actually. Both versions they get another world hater with that version of Richard, and Crenshaw is decent. I like to use him on the Franklin or USS Thomas Jefferson. So not an ability I use often, but they do have a few ships that you can be pretty good on. And then they got, they got a bunch of combo crew that are about seven points that have like crew protect and either extra action or same action twice. I think there's about three of them. Dick Atour being one of them. He's cool because he's a historical crew. Commodore David Porter, eh, broadside attack, not so great. Commodore Edward Preble links to all American ships and gives the AA ability, which is fantastic, especially in larger games. The Americans have at least one ship with reroll built in, USS Kentucky. And uh, they did get a zero all hour plus five crew with Matthew Perry, another historical nod. And Commodore Peregrine Stern is a great one. He's got Captain EA and plus one aboards for nine. So very good crew. Just make sure you put other crew on the same ship so he doesn't go down in a boarding party early in the game. You want to protect him. Such a such a big investment there. They did get a crew canceller with Diamond Nelson Turner. The version from Barbary Coast is a five point simple canceller. And they also have, oh, that's another thing about the Americans I should have mentioned um, at the beginning here with this overview. They have the most ships in the game with canceling built in. So they've got the Lizard, Hessian, Ghostwalker, 
Kettering, and maybe one more. And then they've got a crew canceller as well. So they've got, I think, about five total cancellers in the faction, which is the most in the game. Um, the English have two crew cancellers, but the Americans have the most overall, which is really impressive. Cancellers are extremely important, especially in larger games, form like a super squadron of, like, not invincibility, but you get the point. It gets really intense quickly. And I put that together in Ocean, uh, not Ocean Train Contest. I put that together in Vassal Campaign Game 3, and it did do really well. I was able to use a canceling squadron to capture other cancelers and then, like, expand it. So I eventually got up to, like, nine, I think, cancelers. But, uh, it's crazy. So, yeah, Vassal Campaign Game 3, I'll put a link to that battle report in the description below. It's all in one report now because the picture links got broken. But, anyway, it's fixed for now. And if you want to see how to optimize the Americans in larger games, that's definitely something to check out. And, yeah, that's the best version of Turner, though, the canceling version. You see the other versions are just not... They're overpriced for the capabilities. Dr. Clark Lewis, now to Lewis and Clark. Kind of weird. Um, okay, here we go. So this is unique. They got two crew with just Eternal. So Gus Schultz, two points for Eternal, which is cool. I think Eternal's worth three. So that's that's a pretty good deal, certainly. Uh, Jerky Johnson, not too needed. John Paul Jones, another crew protect, SAT crew. Jonathan Harden is fantastic. He gives Captain with reroll which is perfect because they got a bunch of other named crew. We've already seen some of them with SAT or EA built in. So then Harden reroll is perfect for those abilities. So I always use Harden in, um, in some of my optimized American gunship setups, usually on the Constitution or any number of their really good ships. Even on the Enterprise would be good because that one's got EA built in, extra action, on a five or six, that is. And then they got, they got some crappy crew too, like King George. So filching gold for four points, it's only worth like one or two. So uh, Kodiak is really bad. Uh, this version of Richard is okay. Uh, Montana Maze, like I said, all three versions are good, playable, pretty darn good. And links to the Concordia, which is a nice gunship that we saw. Then the second page of crew, Ralph David gets overshadowed. This first version does. This is the plus two gold ability for just three points, just like Guinea Gallows for the Pirates. So an amazing deal there. Uh, then, then he's got two other versions. This is a unique crew, Ralph David. He's got Ghost Ship for eight points, which is just insane. Um, it's just silly and bizarre. Really bizarre. Like, Ghost Ship on an American crew with no other abilities for this bizarre exorbitant cost. But So that one you'll not use. But the first one is over, gets overshadowed probably because it's older, but especially because the, the final version of Ralph David is eternal for one point because Hostile Pirate... WizKids subtracted a point for that, even though they probably shouldn't have. So the Rise of the Fiends version of Ralph David, Eternal for one point, is a great deal. I usually put them on uh, the Kettering, or the Mer Mercury, or a Five Master, and uh, it really helps the Americans out. They've got two named crew with Eternal. There's only one other Eternal named crew in the game, Phantasma from Rise of the Fiends, at least I believe so. So Really impressive and kind of bizarre that the Curse didn't get the most Eternal named crew. Uh, the Americans actually claim that. So the Americans have all these weird, like, niche strengths that you wouldn't expect. So they have the best longship in the game, maybe the best three-masted submarine. They've got two eternal named crew, uh, So and they've got the best hoist, basically, and the best native canoes. So they made out, they made out really well in Savage Shores. Without Savage Shores, I don't think I would call the Americans underrated for ghost running. Um, so they've got some weird strengths that, you know, you need specific game pieces to, like, go truly crazy with the optimization, but once you get, you know, a solid American collection, it can be pretty impressive overall. So, Wayne Nolan, they got a zero limit ransom re-roller, and then they got an overpriced Marine, William Eaton, which is another historical nod, which I like. I'll link to this thread as well, God Mason's Unique Crew Abilities by Faction. I've been doing that in this series. So, this is basically what I already talked about, but yeah, they've got some internal crew. You can see how, how unique some of their crew are, which is nice. So, and then I'm also going to link to these collection review series episodes. So I've already done videos on the Americans. I reviewed all of the American ships I own in CRS episode 9. And then episode 10, of course, is the crew review. So you can check out in detail the American name crew there if you want to see more details on that. So overall, they're better at gold running than you think. But combat is still the focus. A ton of great uh, large gunships. So that's really how to optimize. And again, there's some specific pieces to acquire like maybe the Eternal crew, some of the some of the name crew with extra action, SAT, and then uh, some of the best ships like Frontier, Native Canoes, Constitution, Enterprise, ships like that. So to optimize 
you might have to go out of your way to get some of their some of their better game pieces, but they can be quite a good faction overall. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to continue this series hopefully with uh, the next faction, which is the Curse. And uh, but before that, I'll see you again soon.